Supercars of London and the second video to go live tonight. I am down at Hexagon Classic Cars with Microsoft Surface. I'm going to be doing a very special Q&A surrounding the GCSE exam results, careers and how both myself and Oakley from Oaklefish became YouTubers. So I'm going to head inside, meet up with Oakley, check out a few of the cars that they've got in stock and then answer some of your questions. So let's go. So I'm inside Hexagon Classic Cars. We've got the guys behind setting up where we're going to be doing the Q&A, but I just thought that I would show you some of the collection and what they've got for sale at the moment. Oakley isn't sat down there, so maybe we'll find him having a mooch around some of the cars. Maybe he's thinking of upgrading. We've got a Super America here, a couple of awesome Porsches, and there is another Super America around the corner, which um, Oakley is checking out. Oakley? How are you doing? Good, thank you. Yeah, good, thank you. Good to see you again. I'll lean across this porch and show your hand. <laughs> Check out the champagne Ferrari. I know, man. It's ridiculous. I was just admiring it. 400k. 400 bags, man. If you had a pound for every subscriber, though. Not far <laughs> off. Not far off. Not far off. That's it. You ready to answer some questions? I am, mate. Let's, yeah, do it. let's, let's go, go. Let's go and head over, get set up, and get answering some questions. Last night, myself and Oakley took to Twitter and Instagram to ask you guys to submit your questions. And guys, the response was absolutely outrageous, absolutely ridiculous. We had over like 500 questions each. Like, like <laughs> 500 questions each, that's like a thousand questions. So what we've decided to do, we've taken the best of the best, we've got them loaded up here on a Microsoft Surface, and we talk about our GCSE results, our own career options, and also YouTube as a whole. So Paul, are you ready to go? I'm ready, let's go. Let's get into it. Question number one that comes from Ross. What should I do if I still have no idea what job I want to go into? <laughs> Kicking it off pretty <laughs> yeah. strong there. Um, to be honest with you, I don't think many people do know exactly what they want to do at, at GCSE age. I mean, you're, you're still only, what, like 16 years old? 16, 16 17? Yeah. I didn't really have that much of an idea. I knew roughly where I wanted to go. No, like, major concept of it. I think if you go down like a path of stuff that you enjoy, I think that's the best place to go. I don't think do stuff just because you're told to do it. I think do stuff that you enjoy. So if you enjoy doing science, do something with science. If you enjoy doing PE, do PE. That um, is, uh... That'd be my two cents, I reckon. Okay, then this next question coming in from Instagram. It's from a chap called Omer. Sorry if I've enunciated that absolutely <laughs> terribly there, but it says, what led you to start a YouTube channel? Okay, so I knew YouTube existed, I knew that people were uploading, and I think the main thing for me was seeing the uh, BBC News Bulletin where it said you can get paid to upload to YouTube. I was like, that is my dream job, just doing something that you love doing, filming, editing, whatever it was, and I stumbled across the car scene. It was uh, a, an art trip into central London, and that's where it all started, and it all came together, and uh, now I'm running around filming cars still. Mm -hmm. There you go, that's <laughs> it. Um, my story is far more nerdy. I was at university, I had loads of times on my hands. Um, I was just basically playing a lot of Xbox. I saw people uploading video games to YouTube and I thought, why not give it a go myself? And here we are today. This question comes from Josh. Do you think grades mean everything? Interesting no. question. No, it's an interesting question, but no, I don't think they do. Um, the reason for which is that you obviously you get stories of people from pre older generations, oh, I dropped out of school this age, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that really... Is, has the same effect today, but I don't think that your life is set out from you know a couple of exams you do at 16 years of age. You can yeah. work your way up for sure. That's definite. That's a definite. Um, and I think it's just basically hard work to be honest. You hard work, and if you properly apply yourself to something you do genuinely like doing, that's where the success comes. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. That's it. Um, so no flat answer to it. I don't think grades mean everything. Another one here from Declan who says, "What is your most memorable school moment?" My most memorable school moment. I think that, like, as weird as it sounds, that going into school to collect your exam results is obviously a memorable <laughs> moment. One, a daunting one, very, and can go to either two ways. But at the same time, I loved playing sport at uni. I was football, tennis, athletics. A memorable moment for me might have been breaking the school record in triple jump, you know? Oh, that's pretty... I not not exam-related, but... <laughs> <laughs> I never actually made any of the sports team in my secondary school. It was absolutely devastating, so I think we just move swiftly on. <laughs> Dan asks, what was your favourite subject in school? Favourite subject in school? It varied throughout the time that I was in school. So to begin with, obviously, it was PE, you played sport yeah. a lot. But then as that became a lot more technical and more sort of biological, I moved into the arts and the, the, yeah, the arts, the graphic design, and that's where I was. I was always a designer, so I always liked drawing. I always have, had an imaginative or creative brain. So I'd say, like, graphics, art, drama, that sort of stuff, like 
makes me sound like a bit of a girl, but <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Um, I'd say like through like year seven to probably just after my GCSEs, like when I went into A levels, I just liked the, the subject with my favourite teacher in it. To be honest with you, it varied a lot depending on how much homework was issued. In fact, it's actually basically pretty much based on homework. So how much whichever, homework you got? Whichever subject had the least amount of homework was absolutely fine by me. Maths was probably my least. Yeah, I was going to say maths until GCSE year when my che teacher changed. Um, so yeah, I think RE or games, double games on a Wednesday afternoon, couldn't go wrong. Do you know what I did in maths? My, I had my teacher for the last, for five years, and we always used to do the even numbers in, in the lesson yeah. to do the odd That's numbers at home. home. So I clocked on after his first year and just did the odd ones when he said to do the even. I'd done the homework in school. That's, that's quite cunning. Our teacher used to do that. They used to give us like, they'd say, all right, so you just have to do one question tonight, class. Like, all right, 32. You look at it, it's got like A to bloody Z. Yeah, like, yeah. Parts on it. I had teachers like that, didn't like them. Yeah. So this question is from Jordan on Twitter. And his question to us is, what did you have planned for your future? Or where did you want to be before YouTube? So this is whilst we were at school. And we didn't obviously know that we were going to be YouTubers. Yeah. Um, well, I've, I, I personally, I, the school I went to was like very much like, OK, so you're going to basically go into finance in some area. Uh, so stockbroking was where I kind of wanted to end up. Uh, whilst I was in school, that was like the notion that I had. Um, it actually took me going to uni, doing a degree in economics and finance, and then also doing YouTube at the same time to realise I actually preferred doing YouTube. And the concept now of doing stockbroking is kind of just like, ugh, kind of just leave it really, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what did I want to do in the future? I always wanted to have my own company, but I had no idea what it was going to be in. I always thought of just earning my own money yeah. rather than being in a job and and I don't know, there was just something off the cuff that I, just, I didn't want to be in a nine to five job and that's sort of where, I don't know, YouTube came from somehow. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I was that guy at school who used to like sell sweets. I was like the sweet guy. <laughs> so was I. I had like, <laughs> kind of like a, I don't even know what I'd call it, like there was a higher, I had like kids in like year seven when I was in year 11 who I'd give no, like, loads wait, of you sweets. had employees. I, I was like, employing <laughs> people inside of school. Um, and then one of my, um, competitors, if you like, got caught and he got like a two day suspension. So I had to, had to throw it in there because I got a little bit worried. I, <laughs> I was going to say, take asked, advantage for, of the monopoly. For a time, it was going strong. I was saying cans of Coke to £2.50. And that's when he got for like 39p. I was very, it was very good. All right, so the next question comes from Rejoice who says, what did you get in your GCSEs? GCSE grades, uh, two A's, four B's, four C's, and a small D. The dreaded D. <laughs> I got, um, I actually got five B's and four C's. Strong. Which, yeah, I mean, it's just relatively consistent. I was like hoping, like really hoping for a couple of A's. I actually wanted an A star in a couple of them. Um, so that was like kind of upsetting on the day. But, um, you know, soldier on, got into AS, A2, and that was all great. So, yeah. yeah. I've actually got another question from Jenny, who says, what work experience did you have during your education? Good question. Good question, because I think it's important as well as having the education, but you also need that experience of when you're applying for a job, employers will look at the experience side of what you're doing. And, and during my school, I had experience in a catering company uh, because basically I just wanted to eat food. Um, then I worked, uh, I did paper round, I worked for a uh, retail chain, I worked for, no, two retail chains, and then during my gap year, I worked for uh, Ferrari Maserati, which sort of set the uh, tone into work. You've where done a lot did. more than I've done. Um, I worked for my dad, <laughs> that was like, that was like the, the start of it, I was like in the office, admin, um, and that was, yeah, a long time ago. And then I had two jobs in retail, and then nothing. I was just doing my sweet selling. Yeah. That was like my income. So yeah, pretty much it. Two different, two, very two Definitely. different, yeah. <laughs> but we both ended up exactly in chairs next spot. to each other. That's it, that is it. <laughs> So I think that rounds up this Q&A. And thank you to everyone who has submitted your questions. Hopefully, somewhere in our answers, we have covered your question. Um, and I apologize if we didn't actually get to answer your questions. But comment below and let us know what your dream job is. And also, guys, if you're at this stage, you've just got your results and stuff like that, and you don't really know which direction you want to take you know, your, your life in, really, then be sure to go check out the video with Microsoft Surface that I was in and it's hashtag do anything. You can check it out, links in the description down below. Paul, thank you very much for having me on. No worries. Thank you very much to all of the viewers for tuning in and uh, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, Supercars of London, but make sure you head over and subscribe to Oakle Fish as well.
We should do this again sometime. We should. Good collaboration. Next week. Yeah. This Good time next week. Why not, man? <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. See you tomorrow.